The Nikon P1000, the flat earther camera of choice. It's no secret that flat earthers worship this damn thing, and truth be told, I have one myself. It was actually donated to me by a subscriber called Jammy, who disappeared after doing so. So, Jammy, wherever you are, thank you so much. I have been able to capture some awesome sh** with this camera, and of course, my use of the P1000 has pissed off flat earthers everywhere because I am using their preferred camera against them. For example, I used the Nikon P1000 for my Tampa Bay blink test, which clearly showed the curvature of our planet. I used the P1000 to track rockets as they're kicking ass and taking names with the help of a Celestron 6SE and Astronomy Live's tracking software. I used the P1000 to capture transits of the International Space Station, and with some of those observations, I was able to measure the altitude of the ISS, proving that it's in space at an altitude that no plane can reach, that no drone can reach, that no fucking balloon can reach. Hell, my P-1000 even captured the SpaceX Dragon docked to the ISS after filming that very same Dragon blasting off on a Falcon 9 rocket. Top that sh**. So clearly, my P-1000 has done a damn good job generating flat earth butter all over the globe. It has millions of views under its belt. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, while the P-1000 is good for what it is, it does have its limitations, especially in the hands of flat earthers who don't know how to focus worth a damn. And I sh** you not, flat earthers are using those limitations to push their conspiracy even further. So let's break this down. Recently, Flat Earthers have been spreading their ignorance in regards to the P-1000's capability. You can see evidence of this ignorance on Twitter, where Flat Earthers are posting sh** like this. And it's clear what this tweet is attempting to illustrate. Because my Nikon is incapable of producing tack-sharp images of planets like what NASA can capture, therefore conspiracy. And it's not just limited to Twitter, this flavor of bullshit even makes an appearance in the Flat Earth documentary called The Next Level. And yes, I'm aware that calling it a documentary is to give it serious charity that it does not deserve. So, what we have here is Flat Earthers not understanding how NASA can capture such epic shots of our planetary neighbors while their super zoom Nikons can only produce images that look like dog sh** in comparison. Now of course, there is an obvious answer here. Hell, you're probably screaming that answer at your computer screen right now. So let's give voice to the obvious answer. That this is not this, this is not this, and this is not this. Yeah, I know, kinda obvious, right? Kinda makes you wonder if this epic fail is actually caused by ignorance or straight up dishonesty. Comparing the P-1000 to the kit that NASA has access to is like the Ford Maverick having a tug-of-war with a twin-turbo Peterbilt. We all know how this is going to end. But instead of accepting the obvious, the tweet mentioned previously shows which direction they would rather go, which is to claim that the high-resolution images captured by telescopes, such as Hubble, are CGI because the concept that better equipment will produce better results is not something they are willing to accept. But why is that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a theory on that. You see, if our planetary neighbors are actual worlds, then that would mean they are more than just twinkles of light in the sky, which Flat Earthers want them to be only. If Mars, for example, is a world with canyons and mountains, you know, a surface you can actually walk on, then Flat Earthers would have some explaining to do. Because remember, Flat Earthers have been pushing this idea that there is a dome over the Flat Earth that we supposedly live on, and that the stars and the planets are just points of light spitballed by God onto the dome's surface and depicting them as only fuzzy spots of light aids in the narrative that these objects are not solid, have no discernible shape, and therefore not a contradiction to their concept of Earth. In short, 
Mars has to look like this and not like this, otherwise flat earthers will have to answer the obvious question. Why is the Earth flat and not the other f***ing planets? So, in an effort to never answer those questions, they simply claim that if planets actually look the way that NASA asserts, then their super zoom Nikons should be able to get similar images, and since they don't, therefore conspiracy on the part of NASA. If the P-1000 can't do it, then nothing can. And just like that, flat earthers have avoided those uncomfortable questions. Now, it's clear how we respond to this bullshit, and that's by demonstrating that the Nikon P1000 is not the end-all be-all when it comes to optical equipment, and by showing what is possible with kit that is objectively better. Like it or not, Flat Earthers, when you use the wrong tool for the job, the quality of your output is going to suffer, and I have done everything in my power to get the best out of this camera. I even have this camera on an actual telescope mount, a Celestron 6SE with a custom made bracket. So clearly ladies and gentlemen, I am pushing this camera to its limits. And because I know its limits, I can assure you, the Nikon P1000 is not the best piece of equipment for planetary observations, seeing satellites in orbit, and so on. So let's get down to business. Let's do a comparison between the P1000 and something much better. And for that, I need the help of my good friend, Astronomy Live. So this is it, the Nikon P1000, the flat earther camera of choice. We're gonna compare this to that. This is a Celestron Nexstar GPS, an 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It has a focal length of 2.8 meters natively, with a 2x crop factor of the Black Magic camera that I have attached, plus a 2.5x Barlow, the effective focal length is 14 meters. By comparison, the Nikon P1000 has an effective focal length of 3 meters. Let's see how it does. Our first comparison would involve the International Space Station, another thorn in the ass of flat earthers everywhere who like to claim that satellites don't exist. And as you can see from this image, I set up the Nikon P1000 only a few feet away from Astronomy Live's telescope. Both were using Celestron telescope mounts, and both were using the same tracking software to follow the space station. So, same location, same morning, viewing the same pass of the station, and using Celestron telescope mounts running the same software. And to make sure that everything was even, we would use the same tools to stabilize the footage after the fact. And this is what we got. I must say, I am impressed with what the P-1000 was able to capture. You can clearly see the orientation of the space station shift as it crosses the sky. But with that said, it's clearly no match for the telescope. With an effective focal length of 14 meters, along with having a much better camera sensor, the detail in Astronomy Live's footage is just amazing. I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely f***ing gorgeous. Here, I selected the best frame from both views, and once again, the telescope wins hands down. It really shows the limitations of the Nikon, even with someone who knows how to focus it worth a damn. Looking at the telescope's frame, you can see Soyuz, Progress, Irosa, the SpaceX Dragon, all clearly defined in the image. Not only does this show what is possible with an actual telescope, but it shows that the ISS is not a spy plane or a balloon of some kind. NASA's description of the space station is confirmed in a shot like this, like it or not. Is this the reason flat earthers don't invest in telescopes? Are they worried what they might find if they actually use the damn thing? I don't know, you tell me. 
For our next test, we decided to look at the planet Saturn, and just like last time, I placed the Nikon P1000 on the Celestron 6SE telescope mount and recorded some video at max zoom. Quality was set to 4K, and that footage would then be stacked after the fact to render the final image. So, after doing that, this is what I was able to get after all was said and done. So yes, this image isn't going to win any awards, but it does show that Saturn isn't just a blob of light in the sky, it is a planet with a ring system that reveals that it's a three-dimensional object. Because, see this notch in the rings right here? That is the shadow of the planet being cast on the rings itself. So even the Nikon can provide us with enough information to make Flat Earthers very uncomfortable. But now it is time to compare my image of Saturn with the image Astronomy Live was able to get with his telescope. And behold! As you can see, we get a lot more detail in his image. Details that simply could not be picked up by the Nikon P1000. The cloud bands on the planet become very noticeable here, and we also clearly see the gap in the rings called Cassini's Division. And once again, we see the shadow of the planet being cast on the rings right here. So, with more detail in his image, we can easily conclude that the rings are going around the planet. Oh, and the fact that we see Saturn blocking light, thus casting a shadow on the rings, shows that Saturn is not a light source. Flat Earthers have said this to me in the past, and now they know why it is completely wrong. Imagine a world where this was the best image we could capture. It would be a world filled with dipshits who struggle to focus their camera or set their exposure correctly. It would be a world where we don't choose the best tools for the job, and it would be a world where these flat earth ass hold our species back from realizing the true beauty of our solar system and the cosmos in general. And that's the kind of world flat earthers want. And the limitations, and dare I say the sloppy use, of the Nikon P1000 aids in that endeavor. Because in such a world, they never have to see those difficult questions as valid. Yes, the Nikon P1000 has a great zoom, but Flat Earthers use that massive lens to simply give off the impression that they're willing to look for the truth. But in reality, they avoid using tools that can actually get them closer to it. They don't want to be the next Bob Nodell, who discovers the rotation of the Earth and then has to do a sh** ton of damage control after the fact. But this video has shown that the Nikon P1000 is not the end-all be-all. Although it would help if you guys could learn how to focus your cameras properly. But I guess it doesn't matter. Even if Flat Earthers could focus their cameras properly, telescopes exist that will always provide better results, which means they will always do a better job showing you what planets actually look like. And with that understanding in mind, let me show you Flatheads one last thing. Something else Astronomy Live captured with an actual telescope. What you are seeing is a time lapse of Mars through a telescope, and in this time lapse, we can see surface features and the fact that it is rotating. Mars is more than just a blob in the sky, it is a world with a rotating surface that contradicts your assertions as described in this video. And clearly, the Nikon P1000 does not have the capability to capture a shot like this. So, how would you even begin to truly grasp this reality if that is all you were using? So no, this is not what planets look like in the ultimate sense. That assertion is Flat Earth conspiratorial bunk, and anybody who gives a sh** can figure that out. I am not saying anything profound here, this is obvious, and this video really shouldn't have to have been made. Yet, here we are. And where we are is back to asking the question. So, Flat Earthers, given the fact that we have telescopes that clearly show that the planets are way more interesting than what you claim, and given the fact that we can use those same telescopes to measure the distance to these planets, revealing that they are millions of miles away, I ask the following question. Why is the Earth flat and not the other fucking planets? Seems like there's a contradiction there.
I would like to thank Astronomy Live for helping me with this video. You can find all of his links posted down below. So go ahead and follow him on Twitter. Go ahead and subscribe to his YouTube channel. I would appreciate it. So with that, my name is Red. This has been his rhetoric. And as always, have a good night.